Hello, hello. Move my mic. Hello. Uh, welcome. Welcome, Flicker friends, to... Let me just make sure. Oh. Testy tests here. I haven't streamed in about two years, so I am a little rusty at where all my buttons are. <laughs> So don't mind me. Let's see. I'm gonna check on my phone. Let's just make sure that I am indeed not talking to the abyss. It's like I am on the internet. Woohoo! Super fun. Uh okay, so hi. My name's Aaron. Uh who anyone who doesn't actually know me. Um, Nielsen Letters, I'm a collector based in Montreal, Quebec, uh, and I decided that for the next six weeks, I'm just going to be doing some, uh, you know, basically teaching a workshop, because why not? Uh, I figured, uh, you know, there's a lot of newbies out there, and, and I, 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 I'm by no means an expert of, I've just been doing it for a long time, and I have a lot of Jumped into my brain. Uh, so I figured I would share uh, for for the time that I have. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I, uh, I also, let me see if I can do that. Uh, for anyone who is in, drop a link at my workbook. I'm also sorry that there's no music in the background. I am terrified of like copyright strikes <laughs> in any. So there won't be any backing backing sound. So it's there. You see it pops up on the screen as well, but it should be there should be a little chat box uh around you. seen this before. Uh, if you've not been on Twitch before, uh where you can yep, with your workbook, we uh it, not necessarily follow along uh if you don't want to, but you know, there's just there's stuff in there. There's about thirty pages of things. I thought it was going to all like a just like a fun uh little cute little workbook not I have no chill really just go for it uh okay so what are we gonna do today uh today we are gonna be well actually first of all what are we learning at all it's people some not everyone is here who knows what the heck i'm doing uh so i'm gonna be teaching you guys uh copper plate calligraphy as much as, as best as i can uh so that copper plate is basically the hand that i use the most when i'm working um which is super fun um and what happens with sorry i just got distracted with some anyway sorry about that so yeah basically uh copper plate calligraphy is the often uh when i'm working and uh so i have a lot of knowledge like i said up in my little noggin and uh i wanted to share that so we're going to be learning from the basics it's going to be Pretty slow paced. We're not in a rush. Eleven, I think, uh, dates. Um, I will also be. I, I'm I'm recording uh, on my end right now, and I will be uploading this onto YouTube uh, as well, which is super fun. Um, so if you've missed it, no problem. Or if you have to duck out, or if you just like, I don't like things being live. I want to put things at two times speed so I can get through it quicker. I get it. That's me too. So, uh, yeah. So basically we're going to start from, from the start, from the beginning, which means we're going to be, uh, looking at tools, which I love tools, love the, the tools. The tools are the fun part. Uh, the tools are also the most expensive part. <laughs> I won't lie. Uh, okay. Perfect. So I'm going to swap this. Let me just actually, no, I want to do this. 
set up. Still see my, my beautiful face um, going on here there. So, uh, so these are just some of the papers I had printed. Oh, do you see that I have three cameras going? Uh, this is this will be uh, helpful for when we actually start learning. Right, uh, because you'll see uh, down here on the bottom left of your um, you see uh, my hand here, uh, and I, I'll adjust this when I. It's down here, uh, so you actually be able to see how I hold the pen. Oh no. Oh, volume issues. Okay. Hold on a second. I have a filter on it right now, so it might just be being a little silly. Let me maybe just turn off filter. That might be not too much. Thank you for telling me. I appreciate it. Uh I guess I have to be more consistent when it comes to speaking directly into the microphone. I can see it working on my end here. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. How, how is this going? I, I guess I'll, I'll just be more more particular. <laughs> when I'm actually speaking and like, I'll, you know what, when I'm sitting up straight, I'll put the mic directly in front of my face. There we go. Uh, yeah. So we're going to start with tools. Uh, but yeah, I, like I had mentioned, you're going to see my hands here. So you'd be able to see the angle, not only top down, but you're going to see it on the side as well. Um, and I just have some tape, which you can kind of see, uh, around the corners uh on the bottom left camera because this is how i know i need to stay in frame <laughs> okay so the first fun uh tool that we're gonna kind of we're gonna learn about is uh one of i would say arguably the most important tools which is the pen holder so let me put a little tray out so you can you know see uh very nice so generally speaking Pointed pen calligraphy is done with um, it, uh, a specific pen holders. In technically, you can use whatever you want, um, but for for this particular discussion, we're going to be uh, using oblique or a straight pen holder. That's totally fine. So I will show you what that is because if you've never done calligraphy, you're like, I don't know what a oblique pen holder is, or a straight pen holder, or what a pen holder is at all. So we're going to start with the one that I hate. <laughs> so please don't buy these. Um, in my opinion, speedball, don't yell at me. Uh, this guy. Okay. I, I can't tell you more how much I loathe this particular pen holder. Uh, it is intent. It's very frustrating. Um, if you've downloaded my PDF, you'll see that I have a little uh, diagram in there that has uh, a pen holder that has a, uh, a nib, um, which I, and I tell you how to align it, which is the, the point of the nib supposed to be to the middle of this. This one sucks. It's not good because you can't get the nib in far enough to align it properly with the actual pen holder. So because this part, this plastic thing is not very deep. So this is very inexpensive. Um, and I know it's tempting to get, but it's not good because it makes your makes learning harder because you have to adjust your your hand so much to make the strokes correct. So this is the one I don't like. Okay, as a plastic, this is called a flange, by the way. This this piece here. Please don't get this one. <laughs> Please make your life easier and don't get this one. Uh, you should get one that has like this still inexpensive this is also i think from speedball as well but this has a flange that's brass or at least metal and the reason this is great is because you see here whereas with this one it's just like this plastic one you can't see through it because you can't push the nib far away inside enough whereas this one is uh like a piece of uh brass that's been um I guess bent to the proper nib circumference, 
I guess, circumference. Anyways, but you can kind of, you can see through it. Um, hope that the stream is catching that and I'm not being too uh, chopped up <clears throat> uh, and that the, the quality of the stream is high enough that you can see that. Um, basically, let me grab a nib so I can show you what I mean. When you put a nib inside, it should line The tip of the nib should align with the center of the pen holder. And it's, you see here, it uh, hits at the back of this brass flange. But when you are using this plastic one, that's as far as I can get it in. Look how off that is, which makes your life so much more difficult when you're working. Trust me. Trust me. Don't get this. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is this is a very basic one. It's not very expensive to get. I think they're around three, maybe four dollars. Very inexpensive. Uh, I, I wouldn't recommend the one that has there's like little nails, which means you can't pull this in and out to clean it. Um, there's another there's a different kind that you can that doesn't have these two little uh, like nails inside. I would get that instead of this guy. I just don't have the other one on hand. So this is the, the pulled out of my collection. So that's number one. Uh, and now I'm going to show you some fancier ones because I, I have, listen, the, 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 the problem with calligraphy is that you start to get a lot. <clears throat> this is only a few of the ones that I have, but I wanted to show you um, a different type of flange. And I, to be fair, I don't remember the name of this type of flange. If someone knows, feel free to type it in the chat. That would be cool. If not, that's okay too. Um, but this one here has a, uh, it's, it's not as simple as this guy you can clearly see, but this one, you can put many different, um, types of nibs inside They like smaller or bigger, uh, one. So I like using this one. I also like the hold of this one. Um, I don't remember the, it was an Etsy guy I got this from, and I don't remember what his uh, handle is right now, but. I, I like this guy, I like that it is a two type of material. It's very comfortable for me to uh, use for long periods of time. I have this one as well, which was made from an antler, I believe of a deer, <laughs> which is, it is incredibly comfortable to use. It's very smooth uh, in my hand, very comfortable. Uh, and then I have this one as well, which if anyone is a Harry Potter fan, um, you might recognize the design uh, in which it is based on the Elder Wand. So this was a little treat for myself. And uh, the flange itself is hand carved. Look at those details. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the details on this? That is uh, that someone carved this by hand amount of time and effort that that takes. So so these are uh, all varying price points of things that I've gotten for myself. Um, I believe this one, so I'm in Canada, so I, any price wise, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be talking, generally speaking, will be in Canadian dollars. Uh, and I'm just going off the top of my head, so I might be very wrong. But this one, I believe, was something around 70 to $80. This one was something like one, I want to say 150, and this one was more in the $200 range, uh, versus this one, which works out perfectly fine. Okay. I still use ones like this all the time because I sometimes, I, it's the first thing I grab. Uh, and this is around five bucks. So you can still get very good work done with uh, an inexpensive pen holder. So these are the oblique ones. And I will go into after why I use an oblique one. Um, but I will show you now the next one, which are straight pen, which are basically the same thing without the flange. So we have the ability to put the pen this way, and then you just can just start writing. Um, so yeah, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There's a lot of different types. Uh, I think this one is like a hand turned wood. You can see the grain in it. 
uh, here. This one is, I don't even know, plastic? Feels like maybe cork wrapped with paper, <laughs> to be fair. And then this one is just, just straight plastic. Um, yeah, those are, those are these guys. Uh, a lot of people will use straight pen holders for broad edge type calligraphy. Um, so things that, uh, are broad edge, I, <clears throat> I'm not sure the level of, of people who, who will be writing this. Uh, oh, I love an ad right in the middle of my thing. So, uh, yeah, anyway, so the, uh, yeah, sorry, I got distracted by that. The... Uh, broad, broad edge is broad edge is kind of like when you're thinking of like gothic or uh, romans or something along those lines you're going to uh see people using these guys not not these ones uh these are generally speaking used for copper plate spencerian alien hand things like that so i will explain to you the reason for having uh the uh, pen holder uh, versus having the straight one and basically it's because <clears throat> or at least as far as I understand as well the I could do that anyways <laughs> um yeah okay perfect so for me the way that I understand it is that um a lot of calligraphy scripts are based on a specific angle that you have to work at so doing that with a straight pen holder is much more challenging uh, to get the correct angle of the lettering, um, which you can kind of, oh, here, I have my exemplar that I made uh, here. So you'll see that the writing itself is on an angle. Much easier to do when you have a oblique pen holder because the nib and stuff is aligned correctly. Uh, that's not to say that you can't do calligraphy and pointed pen of any type with just a straight pen holder, if that's all you have. Uh, I know a lot of people use them if they're a lefty. Uh, I will just grab whatever is closest if I don't, like, just depends. Um, it can sometimes be more, a bit more difficult to do the angle correctly if you're using a straight pen holder, especially for beginners. I always recommend having the oblique one. Uh, just because it does make your job a little bit easier. And uh, why why, why struggle when you can make it easier? Um, so yeah, so that is going to be the, uh, the pen holder portion. Uh, and then I had my recommended nibs. Uh, yet another, um, you know, thing that people like to talk about all the time. Oh, also, by the way, so this is, <clears throat> I'm also speaking very specifically about pointed pen, which is why I'm only bringing out these tools. Uh, but these are not the only tools that you can do calligraphy with, okay? Uh, like with ink. I have so many different types of pen holders. I'll give you a very brief tour of them. It's a lot. <laughs> it is just a lot. So I have some glass ones here which are fun very good for like monoline i have a couple other straight pen old hen holders pen pen holders here i have more more oblique ones some are hand turned some are uh epoxy or resin ones uh, an ergonomic one You also have these guys. These are very fun. Um, they're folded pens, which are a delight. They're such a, they're so messy and so wonderful to use. You want texture and fun things to be, be writing with. Uh, and then, you know, you have your, your parallel pens. Um, and then you have like fountain pens, and, um, pencils and pens and, and uh, you know, colored markers and brush pens and brush markers. Like there's a lot you can use. So I'm going to be talking also very specifically when it comes to copper plate uh, with uh, these types of pen holders, either oblique or straight <laughs> or pencils, honestly. Um, so just so 
there's a lot out there. I'm going to try and keep it as narrow as possible. Uh, okay, now we're going to go on to this. So on in my worksheet, there's a there's a bunch of nibs out there. So it, it can get very overwhelming for people who have never done calligraphy before. Um, just because there's so much choice and you don't know. <laughs> you don't know what you don't know. Um, so I recommend these four. I'm organizing them in, say, most, most stiff to least stiff. Do the that's what she said jokes. That one. So we are going to start with these two, which are the uh, G nib. The scooch. See that. Uh, okay, so we got a little Nico G and a Zebra G action here. So these guys. Uh, these are fairly easy to find. I find the Zebra Gs are much easier to find um, than the Nico G. Um, I'm not sure why. I, I, I think when I started a few years ago, it was the um, Nico G that was easier to find. But yeah, these are these two. They basically look the same. When you're using them, there is a subtle difference, I find, is that the Nico G has a very a much sharper um, tip to the nib. Pardon me. And the Zebra G, slightly less sharp, so your hairlines won't be as precise. But we're, that's like, we're talking like real nitpicky on that one. If you're <laughs> really like very nitpicky. Uh, and I can, I can tell the difference, but it's, for all intents and purposes, they're basically almost, they're almost identical. So there's these two. And then my two, so my absolute favorite, EF Principal, which is this guy, but the Hunt 101 is a, a favorite of many people. I know. My favorite is this one. I know that the Hunt 101 is very favorite among a lot of people. Uh, I I love so these two I would say are more quote intermediate level uh, nibs I would say because they're very flexible which means it's um, it requires a little more say uh, control on your hand uh, for how much you want to press down how 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 springy they are uh, these are much more flexible. They're more challenging to use if you've never done pointed pen before to use these. Um, these, I would say, more intermediate level. The other two are more. Uh, and you might be wondering, like, why that would be the case. So let me. How can I show this? So I think I'll just show this on this little coaster here. So when you press down, when you press down on a nib, What's going to happen is that these tines are going to spread. See that there. You can see that they're spreading and then they come back together. With the Nico G and the Zebra G nibs, that takes more f a, a decent amount of force to be able to do that, and it and it springs back up together, just like that. This is why it's good for beginners because most of the time, when you're starting out. You've never touched a pen like this before in your life, and you're used to writing with ballpoint pens or regular pens most of your most of the time, right? So, because of that, uh, most people have a very like hard hand. Like when they're writing, they're pressing down really hard. I like to refer to it as death grip. How fun! Um, so actually, no. uh, so they're pressing down a lot, pressing down hard. Um, these nibs can take it. And it kind of forces you to be able to like let up easier because your hand is going to get really tired um, because this is stiffer, right? Versus my favorite one. This is the EF principle. And when I'm pressing, I'm, it's, like, it's not even in the same category of, it, it looks the same, I know. Just like, well, actually, the tines can, they spread a little wider. And the amount of pressure I'm pushing on that to make the tines spread is much less. It's much less intense. So it's much easier on my hand 
But if you're coming from using like ballpoint pens or regular pens, going to one that's more flexible like this one versus a Nico or a Zebra G. Um, my point with the correct one. Uh, it can be it can be really hard. It can be very difficult for your hand. Um, and like you you might end up honestly breaking the tine. Uh, maybe, or you're just going to get really frustrated with yourself because you're like, oh, why isn't it working? It's just, it's a, it's a thing with being like a, the lightness of your hand, which comes with time and experience and practice. Uh, okay. Now the next one I want to talk to you types of ink. Listen, there's a lot of types of ink out there. There's just a lot. There's just, there's so, there's so many. Um, it's almost easier for me to explain what I would say don't get for uh for calligraphy and that would be anything that says waterproof um anything that says waterproof is going to be very difficult to get off of your nib um i've never needed anything waterproof ever uh and anything that says like a generic china ink i'm not sure what that means um i think they're trying to say sumi ink probably but if it doesn't say Sumi ink, I would say it, don't get it. It's not worth it. Um, it's probably not going to be very good. So I have I have this little thing. So I have I've de I've decanted like I'm a mad scientist. <laughs> a few a few inks into these little containers, which are called dinky dips, uh, and I use this as like my little ink wells, and then I just kind of write with a little um, like a permanent marker. What the heck is in here? Uh, I only recently started this. You'd think I would have started doing that earlier on in my life, but no, I only started doing this now, uh, which is super fun. But there's been many a time I've put ink in here and I have totally forgotten what the heck I've put in here and I have to test and go, hmm, which color is this again? <laughs> uh, so I'm also a weird person to ask what their favorite ink is because I, generally speaking, don't use ink most of the time, which sounds weird i know it sounds kind of weird kind of strange and i understand that um but i usually use gouache so when i say gouache i specifically mean this guy uh or this brand anyways they have lots of different colors but it's the schmink schminka uh calligraphy gouache this one specifically is in jet black um if you want to imitate um you know just like a black ink and you might be wondering, uh, but Aaron, this is a tube ink. This is a paste. Uh, this is not ink. And I'm like, I would be like, right. You're absolutely right. It's not. Um, so you, you literally just need to put like a little bit into one of these and add water. That's it. And then you just like make your own. Um, I, I don't have a ratio <laughs> of water to ink to to paint for you unfortunately um i just kind of know it feels good which is maybe not the best way to explain this um but let's go with not so thin that when you use it you can see through it and it's transparent but not so thick that it doesn't run off your nib it's there's a happy medium somewhere in between there um and i find that the that gouache is very forgiving. I can add a lot of water to it sometimes. And I'm like, oh, I, cool. And I can make it, it, it a little bit goes a long way. So, you know, you can always add more. You can't really take away. So if you want to experiment with this stuff, I would highly recommend uh, the, the bottles. The tubes of these ones are quite kind of expensive, though. I will be upfront about that. They're around $20 for one tube. However, they last a long time. I think I've had this unopened tube for probably two years because I was like, oh, I'm, I'm almost done my other one two years ago. Let me get a new one. And then I, this has been sitting in my drawer for two years now. <laughs> and I use, I use uh, gouache a lot. So that tells you that. So have some of that in this little dinky dip. Uh, I, I also use uh, Higgins Eternal. I don't have a bottle of it anymore, so I can't show you what the packaging looks like. Uh, I think it's around $20 give or take. Um, but Higgins Eternal, they have Higgins Calligraphy, which I've never tried and I don't know if it's any good, but Higgins Eternal is usually the one that I would recommend to new people because the ink is ready to go right out of the bottle. You don't have to do any mixing. You don't have to mess with it. You don't have to futz with it. You can just use it and that's fine. Uh, and then the last one I'll mention is Walnut Ink. So Walnut Ink, 
you can get it in liquid form. Uh, I've gotten it in crystal form. So that is in here. So bas basically, you, you just, it's dried out walnut. Oh, here we go. And here, this is from the Nashville Calligraphers Guild that I got this from. Here is the exact recipe for how to make walnut ink from the crystals. So you dissolve one teaspoon of water crystals into a half cup of distilled water and you mix and that's it. And then you can make a bunch of ink and that's fine. So, and this la this will last you forever. Um, so the, the, the one challenge with walnut ink though is it's not light fast. It will fade if you use it on the, something you wanna hang on a wall. So I, I, walnut ink is great for practicing because it's not expensive. You get one of these, these babies and it'll last you for a long time. Um, and it has a really, it kind of looks like, uh, uh, like coffee, like a little bit. It's like a nice, uh, clear-ish brown color, uh, quite pleasing. I enjoy it thoroughly. Um, and that is what is in this guy right here. It's already been, um, uh, this one had some shimmer in it because I was feeling fancy. <laughs> and I, added, I think I added some like outer something, something in there. Um, very fun. Just have to mix it up a little bit. I sometimes use the back end of a pen pen holder and I just. Uh, so like you also, you don't need dinky dips necessarily to do calligraphy as long as the mouth of whatever ink you have is uh, big enough. If not, let's say you're using uh, gouache and you make it, but you're using it in like a, um, uh, like a small, like you can use like a shot glass or something, uh, which I had mentioned. You can use a, uh, like a ramekin if you want and just make it there. But if you, if you find that you're, you can't dip, uh, you can use a paintbrush and like dip the paintbrush into the ink and then like your, you can like paint, paint your nib, I guess as well. That also works. That can also totally work. Um, but yeah, like it's not, it's not too crazy. So, so far I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you on screen what the bare minimum is. Okay. Go with a plastic pen holder with a brass flange. The Nico G nib. Some type of, I'm just going to put my dinky dip thing in front of here. It doesn't need to be a dinky dip, but it's just something, something along those lines with the walnut ink perhaps, or if you can find some Higgins internal. And like those, that's what you need bare minimum so far. And then what we also need though, we need, we need something to write on, right? You know what that is? We need paper. Um, so paper for beginners, not too, don't break the bank. Don't go crazy, okay? You just need something smooth. These are the two. And most have the Canson, the Canson XL marker paper, smooth, semi-transparent, and bright white. This guy, you can, you can, you can use like a wet ink on it and it won't bleed. Cause that's always, that's always the challenge, right? It's it, that a, a paper is going to bleed or the, the paper fibers are going to uh, catch uh, or something like that. And, and you're going to splatter ink everywhere. Uh, I find this one is very good. It's just like white paper in there. Nothing too crazy. It's a pad. This is a hundred sheets. I think I paid 20 bucks for it and you can just kind of go crazy. Right. And you're not going to feel bad about using it expensive or too nice or too pretty to use um talking to someone who has absolutely uh bought paper and been like i don't want to use it yet because <laughs> i it's too nice like what a what a silly what a silly thing to think. anyways uh and then we have rhodia so i i i just grab so there's um a couple different types of rhodia pads there's ones that are graph paper there's ones that are dot paper people are very familiar with rhodia too because a lot of people use it for dot uh, dot journaling uh, I like this guy. I specifically, I don't know if we can tell the color difference in this one, but this one, this paper is like an ecru versus this one, which is a bright, wow, yeah, you can, perfect. 
I wasn't sure if my camera was going to catch the difference. So this is the Canson one. This is the Rhodia one. I I sometimes just like using this one. It, there's not a humongous difference when it like the thickness is is a bit different here and here. The quality of the Rhodia is a bit higher, so this is going to be a bit more expensive, not by a lot. But I sometimes just like writing on something like a crew because it makes me feel like it's a little bit more like romantic. Like I'm writing some like letter to a lost love <laughs> or or I'm in like Bridgerton or something along the way. Um, so those would be like the two that I would uh, I would recommend. Uh, anything else? I think there's like sometimes printer paper can work well depending on what kind of printer paper. Uh, I would look for anything that's around 80 GSM. Don't ask me what that actually stands for. I just know that that usually works for me because um, I'm not a paper manufacturer. So I don't actually, you'd think I would know these things, but there's a lot of knowledge in here, but it's not always the most in-depth <laughs> on things. I just know what I like. Um, oh, yes. And I want to as well. Another wonderful tool. Honestly, just pencils. Uh, like a soft leaded pencil, which are great. And then I, I will also use a mechanical pencil. Um, this one is 0.03 the lead. And then these ones are uh, Blackwing ones because I, I sometimes like to be a little fancy. You don't, you don't need to get Blackwing ones. This is fine. But you can just get like, you know, a soft lead, soft lead pencil. Uh, because this can mimic uh, the... Uh, thin and thicks when when we get into that uh, portion um, I will I'll go back and forth actually between uh, pencil and um, uh, and uh, nib and ink afterwards so but I, I love using a pencil I, I I use them for drafting and sometimes I just like I like to write with them it's very easy you just pick up a pencil and you can go uh, it's a wonderful tool I, 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 I thoroughly enjoy all right so let me put this back on screen we got a pen holder we got a nib, we got some ink, pencils, paper. If you want to throw in a sharpener and an eraser, go ahead. Also, oh, and I did want to mention as well, my, my little Stadler eraser. I use it a lot. <laughs> uh, we use just like a white eraser. But there's also these black ones. Uh, this one I haven't uh, opened up yet. Um, but black erasers are really good um, for uh, erasing on black paper or dark paper because the white ones tend to leave some type, sometimes white marks. The black ones uh, will leave dark marks, so much less visible on uh, darker paper like black or dark gray or dark blue or anything along those lines. Um, let's see what else we have here. A pile of stuff on my desk. You think I would have been a little better prepared? Um, I also love a ruler. I like this one because it is small and fits into my kit. Um, I can put it into like a little pen pencil holder and it's totally fine because most of the time I'm not working that big. I'm usually working on paper or on cards or on envelopes. So I don't need a massive 18 inch ruler. So I like this one. I, I believe this is a drafting ruler, perhaps. It is from Westcott see there we go Westcott right there uh it is in my Amazon storefront as well I, ha I had made a list of things that I recommended that were in there like the, the essentials the basics uh so I like this one because it has the um the inches here so this is like two inches and you have your oh, this is one uh one inch sorry and then you have half inch and then you have all the the smaller measurements here and then you have the centimeters you get both metric and imperial on this guy, which is great. And you have a protractor built in. Uh, this will be important for copper plate specifically because we love having a 55 degree slant line. We'll get into that after. Uh, so yeah, I, it all comes in one. This is a great little handy tool. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So this one's great. Um, let's see, we got some guidelines. So in the in the workout package that I had made, I had included in there a bunch of uh, guidelines that you can print off and use. So uh, I usually recommend finding some guidelines online, print out my own on like a nicer printer paper. You can also use this with a light pad. 
Uh, I have a couple. I don't want to dig them out, but um, if you look on Amazon for like a rechargeable light pad, you'll find them. They're not that expensive, but it, they're also not 100% necessary either. They're a nice to have. Uh, so basically a light pad will be like a light will be underneath the paper. Then you would have your guide sheet and then you can put paper on top of it so you don't have to write out your guidelines all the time. Uh, but you don't always need to have the light pad to be able to see through it anyways. The Canson marker paper is very good. It's it's thin enough that you can just like slide this underneath and it's fine. Or you can always just draw your own guidelines. It does take more time to do that, but it is, you can do that. It is very possible to do so. Uh, and I think we're good with the tools. Uh, I'm not sure if there's anyone in here right now uh, or if I'm just talking to the void, which is also totally fine because this will be going up on YouTube later. Uh, so... Uh, people can watch it afterwards as well. But if there is anyone, anybody in here, uh, and if you have any questions so far, uh, you can feel free to go ahead and ask those now. Uh, and I'm also going to check and see at the other chat. Let's see how that's a going. I think we're good. I think we're good. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to tidy this up a little bit. Is I'm going to uh, go into talking about uh, warm up exercise. So get my nibs, my nibs handy. Get this right. Out of the way. It's, it's going to be weird for me to write because I can see it on the screen, but I'm going to have to be like looking over my mic. I'm going to, I sh I pr I'll probably have to move my mic down uh, a little bit. Sure. So I can actually you know, see, because right now the, the mic is literally right in my eye line. <laughs> so I'm going to get a few papers out from in marker paper so i always recommend you're going to start this is how i would say you should set up your stuff we're not starting with one paper like one say five or six here two three Four, five, six, I have seven. There we go. Okay. We have seven pages. Why we have seven pages? Because I love having a little cushion when I'm writing. Um, it makes it easier for the pen and the nib and the pen holder and that whole thing to um, like exist, to, to, to function happily uh, with the paper, uh, which I love. That makes me very happy indeed. So uh, we're going to have a few of these. And I'm hoping that my camera this up. Yes. Okay, so instead of writing directly on the guideline, by the way, this is the six millimeter guideline. Um, I, I put two, uh, two, two millimeter, three millimeter, four, five, and six millimeter. So the, those five in the, the worksheet, uh, in, the, in the workbook I made. Uh, so you can feel free to follow along with the exact same one that I made. That's also fine. But if, like I said, the Canson marker paper. So the Canson marker paper is thin enough that I can still see my guidelines through, right? Which is great. So then the other thing I want to show you as well, it's a little bit of mindful practice. So this is how we're going to start first. Before learning anything actually calligraphy specific, and do a little mindful practice. Um, and the reason why this is important, because I know it sounds a little like, this is a waste of my time. How boring. Uh, I get it. <laughs> I understand. I'm also a very impatient person, to be totally honest. It's wild that I do calligraphy, which is like such a time-consuming hobby to have. Slash now it's a business for me. But uh, very time-consuming. Uh, like, it just is what it is. Um... But yes, yeah, so mindful practice. So th these are going to be some warm ups, and I'm going to show you why these are important by doing them. I'm gonna, just going to I'm going to start just with a pencil. That's it. So I'm going. 
get real up close and personal with my pencil right now. Uh, I'm going to move my mic. Hopefully I don't lose any audio. Fingers crossed. Let me know if I do. Able to see. Second. See my mouth. There we go. Okay, perfect. Able to see my. So the. Can you hear? Yes, perfect. So the key with calligraphy, it's about the pressure of the actual uh or when you're putting pressure on the tool that you're using i guess i would say when you're going up and away from you i'm gonna do light pressure when you're going down toward yourself what i'm gonna use this guy because Parker, and then we're going to have do uh, darker pressure as we go down. So that's going to look something like this, where we're going to we're going up and away. Oh, actually, the other thing that I should mention. Ooh. Lisa, when putting the nib in the holder, did you say the tip of the nib should align with the center of the pen holder? To get that on my pen, the nib needs to be pulled out so far. Uh, yeah, so I, I'll show you what it looks like on mine. So. Center-ish of my pen holder is here. Like, it's pretty close to center. Be like that. I do it on a different pen holder. Let's do one that doesn't have slant here. So I would say like that. Visually, we're going right about the center. Are you saying for you that it has to like? I'm I'm curious what your what your pen holder is now. I wish there was a way that you could show it to me <laughs> somehow. But generally speaking, this is is so you have the right um, angle uh, to write, and you're not going. If you're going too far out, it's going to be hard and too far in you're going to be really like cramping your hand to use the, the so yeah it should be aligned with the center at least visually you don't have to use a ruler if that if that helps <clears throat> did i answer your question or is it still a little bit too far for you okay good you can push back in a little bit that's good good to know uh, okay, so we'll go to, ah, oh, my pleasure, Lisa, my pleasure. So we're going to go and do some uh, clockwise circles. So when I say clockwise, or clockwise ovals, sorry. Copper plate is all about ovals, which we will get into. Uh, but for now, tell about it. We're just going to do some mindful exercise. Uh, another thing to think about as well is uh, your posture. I don't need you like this, okay? Please don't hunch your shoulders. Learn from my mistakes. Don't do it, okay? Try and keep your back straight as, as much as you can. And lean from your hips. Uh, lean from your waist. Like that. Don't lean from your shoulders. You will regret it. You will get sore. You will get hurt. Well, then you'll get str you're going to get strained uh, with your back and with your arms, wrists, all that. Be fun. 
learn from my errors, the errors of my ways. Okay. So we're going to try and keep her back straight as much as we can. <clears throat> uh, and then when I'm working, this is another little trickaroo. I don't, I don't tend to do a lot of like little, little finger movements. This might be a little technical, but when I'm, when I'm writing, unless I'm writing really quite small, something like this my my actual fingers aren't going to be moving my wrist isn't even moving. i i i my movement is coming from my shoulder if that helps uh which you can see top left view you can't really see on this one because so <clears throat> i'm going to be like this i'm not moving my wrist i'm not moving my fingers i'm not moving elbow I'm moving up on my shoulder. <clears throat> so when I say we're going to do some ovals, we're going to do ovals like this. And we're going to way away from us is light and then we're going to come towards me. There's going to be pressure up. Um, I'm trying to do just ovals and I'm, I'm doing like a, like kind of what I would think a 55 degree angle would be. It doesn't need to be specifically. When you're doing warm ups, it doesn't need to be beautiful. This is for you. This is for practice. I'm the only one on the internet showing what my practice pages look like. Not you. Don't worry about it. Don't stress. <clears throat> so basically what we're looking for is the pressure and release of your hand, right? So you're looking at it to go light up, down, up, down. It can, it can become very meditative, but we're like only a little bit of pressure and we're pressing a little bit, pressing a little bit, pressing a little bit, pressing. So as you're seeing here, lines here are going to be lighter a little thinner ones coming down towards me are going to be darker and thicker this is gonna if you can get used to that which is very weird to do if you've never done it before this took me when i first learned let me tell you it took me forever to figure out how to do this properly uh, i would be so it was so frustrating it was so frustrating because my hand didn't want it my i did not understand how to do this automatically it drove me crazy okay like i could straight up nuts um now it it is now just automatic but that comes with time <laughs> much frustration um but yes this is doing some mindful practice like this is very good to get your hand used to this because this is the 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 way you're going to be writing with a pointed pen in this. so start with a pencil pressure easy peasy lemon squeeze <clears throat> Light, dark, light pressure, pressure, release, pressure, making sure I'm, I'm still in frame. So when I zoomed in, now, this is now totally useless. Um, it's fine. It's fine. Let's see, it's fine. Release, pressure. Some beautiful corkscrews. Stunning. Beautiful corkscrews. Uh but yeah, as you can see, like I'm I'm kind of joking when I say they're beautiful. I mean it they're they're swirly lines, right? They are what they are. Um but they're not per they're definitely not perfect. I'm not I'm not aiming for perfection. I'm aiming for the the I think I think might be going off on a little tangent here. Um when practicing with the, or, or trying to learn anything new, I guess. Um, when, when doing that, knowing what you're aiming for helps because if you're trying to be perfect on all of the things all at once, it's usually never going to work, uh, at least in my experience. Um, so I'm not looking for in this 
perfectly spaced ovals, uh, perfectly exactly uh, when I'm turning and the curve is here exactly when the pressure is starting. That's not what I'm looking for right now. What I'm what I'm trying to aim for right now is just the pressure release. That's it. That's all I'm doing and a, a general shape a general of uh, ovals would be would be fantastic if you could do this as squares that'd be kind of wild um but you know we're just we're just looking for the the muscle memory of away from you is light and toward you is, uh pressure uh so once you've done a few of those the next one is going to be the uh again we're going toward and away toward and away so when we're towards pressure and then no pressure we'll pressure pressure i just had a thought so the pause there that was me going is that counterclockwise or clockwise that was the thought process in my brain i didn't remember the direction the clock went how fun yes I, i'm an adult living in the world and i sometimes forget those things it's fine uh yeah pressure release pressure pressure so I'm go I'm going kind of fast to be totally honest. The slower you go, the more consistent and more accurate you're going to be. That's just the name of the game. Uh, so you can see right here, like I slowed down, and all of a sudden, like here, wow, those look like very like precise. <laughs> uh, and the minute I I speed up is when it gets wild. This is also a thing that happens when you're doing this in general. So keep that in mind too. The faster you go, the more, um, or the harder it is to keep control of what you're doing is. So slow, slow is good. Slow is fine. So as, as I'm doing this, uh, the pressure at least, uh, I know when I was first learning, I always found this. It's like, as soon as I'd be watching TV, I would just doodle pressure release stuff it also might be just me but you know that that did happen that absolutely did happen um but as we're as we're doing this i'll i'll let you know why this is this is important um it's because copper plate is very much based on the pressure release of like having thin hairlines and thick downstrokes uh and so getting this into your hand uh early is good because it's gonna maybe make it a little easier when you start getting off a bit uh, so did a little. Now uh, we're gonna do a little bit harder, a little bit more difficult. So an infinity loop. It's still the same concept though, which is um down pressure way light pressure. release So you can see here we have same same type of vibes we got the the figure eight we got the infinity loop we're going back and forth pressure release is very fun um so a little a little fun to uh a lot of these types of exercises uh these warm-up drills if you will uh can be used stuff out of them uh if anyone knows Open Inkstand, okay, my friend Chin. She is a delightful human being. She has a book called Calligraphic Animals that is made that are made with a lot of like warm up drills, basically. And I I hope that she doesn't mind me saying that because like because I, I think it's it's genius that that is a thing. I do have her book. I will show you the cover, just so you know what I'm talking about. One second. Is 
this guy. Called calligraphic drawing. You can see here. You can see here. A lot of those loops are here, just just on the front. Pretty sure that looks like some clockwise or uh, counterclockwise. Counterclockwise <laughs> for the tail. Um, so just as a FYI, um, the warm-up drills can be used for other stuff too, not just for yeah. something to keep in mind. Kind of fun to do later. Not for me though. I had to take class her to do that. I'm not very good. At that. I uh, she's very creative. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> um. Okay. Great. And now we're gonna go on to the cone shape. Uh, so the cone shape is basically this. Is like, you know, we got our we got our, we got our cone. Our what would this be? It was, it's like a it's like a rhombus. Would it be a rhombus? I haven't taken. Uh, I don't want to say how long because that will really age age me very quickly. Uh, it's fine. We don't have to talk about that. Um, so th this is an exercise basically to have you be able to control how large uh, the the exercises get. Uh, again, for for control, for pressure and release, but also for the size. So you're not just wildly going out there. Uh, this is we're trying to like focus a little more. Uh, so we're gonna you know pressure and release. We can do this with uh, let's let's keep it a little simple, uh, and let's just go with the. Uh, with the clockwise. So away, light, pressure, light, pressure, light, pressure, light, pressure, light, pressure. And as you can see, I'm, I'm getting bigger, and bigger. And as I'm getting bigger, I'm not moving with my wrist anymore. My wrist. As I'm getting bigger, I'm moving my, my arm. And big. And then let's go counterclockwise through the other way because why not? Uh, Pressure, release, pressure, release, pressure, release. And as we get smaller, all of a sudden I start. Start. So. I really, I, I don't do, do these often enough anymore. I won't lie. Uh, I should. I absolutely should. Um. Just straight up because like it's important and I and I should. It's just nice to do sometimes too. And I think that's part of the why the reason why I wanted to do this live as well is like it also keeps me accountable for what I should be doing. Um, but usually, if you're going to be doing any type of calligraphy, you should probably do a few. I would say maybe five or ten minutes of this before you you start doing actual letters, because you're warming up your hand, you're reminding yourself of how uh, the pressure and release method works. Um, you're getting yourself in the mindset to be able to relax and chill before going in. Uh, it's a nice way to kind of like, you know, uh, be mindful of what you're doing as well, because you have to slow down. One of the reasons why, and I and I'm, I'm I feel like a lot of people have gotten got into calligraphy with COVID specifically for that reason is that uh, it was a time to spend with yourself. Number one and number two, it was a time out of a, not using a screen. Uh, and just using paper and a pen or a pen and a pencil, um, which I find very nice. Uh, in my my previous life before doing this, uh, I this would be my relaxation in the evening would be doing calligraphy because I didn't wasn't on a computer, or wasn't on my phone, wasn't on a screen, uh, and it, I was able to really like focus my brain on something else uh, that was creating something instead of uh, I, I would be creating something instead of like ingesting something. If you understand what I mean, like I'd be creating something on paper instead of just like ingesting videos and just like passively watching. It felt like a little bit more of an active thing. Um, so yeah, that would, that was kind of why I got into it a little bit. So like for me, um, specifically, like I like doing these, I'm doing this now and it reminds me that I probably should do this more often, <laughs> to be totally honest. Um, okay. So I think now that we've gone through the warm ups, I'm going to talk about the eight basic strokes, which are super fun and not at all intimidating. 
Oh, actually, I just remembered. I also have this. Uh, so it's basically a play on the cone. Sorry, before I jumped, I jumped too, I jumped too fast. So, similar to this guy, we're clockwise, counterclockwise, infinity loop and cone. We got some pizza slices. So it's a very similar concept to the cone, basically of just like, just so when you're doing your exercises, you can do um, uh, bigger to smaller or smaller to bigger or like weird angles this way. Uh, I had put a sample of me doing it in the workbook. So let's see, but I don't know if we need to do this right the second. I think you guys can probably understand the uh, concept of this, but that's this guy. Uh, and I'm going to pull Mama, Sorry guys, I had made some notes for myself. I just forgotten to print them because I am that person who always just like I like to print everything. Prepped as possible. Clearly, they didn't work this time because I forgot to print the page I wanted to print. That's fine though. We're good. So I'm going to show you guys the eight basic strokes right now. I'll do it with a pencil first, and then we're going to go and have fun with the pen. Zoom in, Let's see. I'm also gonna explain the guidelines while I'm here. <clears throat> Actually, show you the guideline. Too new, make it. Sorry, by the way, sometimes I do slip into French occasionally. I live in Quebec, therefore I have to be able to speak French and uh, occasionally it comes out of my mouth and I realize it's happening. Uh, okay. This is guidelines, but <laughs> in case you didn't realize, that is what these are. Uh, and I think scrolling. Uh, if if you guys are looking at it, it's page five. I have a page called calligraphic terms, and then I and I drawn out a little a little diagram of of basically how what this is. Because if you don't know. How are you supposed to use this, right? So I'm going to be just writing. Let me use the fun color like pink. This line right here. So basically, we're going to be keeping when we're writing that like this is the block we're going to be keeping. This is called a sender, a sender line. Here. This one is called a sender line. This one, baseline. Here. This one. A baseline. In between the waistline, baseline. This is called your X height. This sounds like math. I'm fully aware. Please don't get scared. <laughs> it's fine, I promise. Um these are gonna be oh yeah, and then the dotted line here, this is already done. This is at 55 degrees, like in here. That's, that's, that's here. Again, it sounds even more like math. I promise you. So this is basically, this is how you read your, your guideline. Okay. Your guideline sheets that I've, that I've provided. So when I say something like, the A or the entry stroke or the something like that 
we're starting at the baseline and we're sticking with the with within the waistline to do the oval the oval x height is six millimeters that sounds like gibberish if you don't know what the terms are so if you ever hear so when i say this is a six millimeter guideline it's because the x height here this is this is six millimeter here right um the other thing well I just realized are the it i had mentioned the the slant line which was 50 degrees which is this guy right here but what i did not mention was there are specific proportions to copper plate that are like that is actual math but i'll give you a very easy way to uh, you just it's easier to work in millimeters for it than it is to work in inches uh so please don't ask me <laughs> the inches of things oh please <laughs> please don't i only know how to use millimeters for this uh just because it makes the math easier math easier so basically the proportions for copper plate are uh three two three that sounds crazy but all that means is that uh, whatever your X height is here, your A sender height and your uh, D sender height here are one and a half times bigger, right? So if this is six millimeters, you do times 1.5, this is gonna be, so it's gonna be nine millimeter and nine millimeter. This will become important for letters like uh, a G, H, things that have a fun loop that go up here, right? Um, so basically, yeah, the, the 323, something to remember. Uh, but once you decide, if you want to figure that out on your own, whatever you decide for your X height here, in this case, it's six millimeter, you times by 1.5, and that will give you the proportions for you. That made sense. Fingers crossed. Anything that you guys have? Please don't be shy. I am here to help as much as possible. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to show you, actually, I can show you with this guy, because this has a flex. Uh, okay, perfect. So th the thing that I'm going to show you first is the eight uh, basic strokes. So the ba eight basic strokes look like just like random marks on a page. Totally understand. Uh, but they're the basic building blocks for most of the minuscule or like small alphabet. Basically what that is. So we're going to start with, uh, if you are in the workbook, it is in the, the templates and exemplars portion. It's like the, after the warm, it's, it's uh, two, down, I believe. Perfect. So we're going to start with our entry stroke. Yeah, you can. Sure, for sure you can see. Uh, which is just, remember how I said there's no pressure? So just a little line up. Going a little fast. Up, no pressure. This is number one. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, instead of doing them one by one, I'm going to show you all of them at once. Then I'm going to blow your mind. How about that? Because I feel like this might be a little... Uh, a little time consuming, and then I'll go into practicing them. How about that? I think that's going to work better. Uh, so be okay here. This is what happens when you go on live. Sometimes you just roll with it. You're also going to be able to see my not so 
Fantastic. Actual handwriting. Not so good. <clears throat> All right. Got our eight basic strokes. Start those. So we got stroke. Stroke. We got the uh, the eight. turn compound curve. Four, seven, eight. And you might be like, mm, Aaron, how the heck does that do anything? We're just making lines on a page. First of all, you're not wrong. Second of all, it's how the, also how writing works. Um, so we're going to do this plus that plus that equals. Equals a letter A. That one. This one. We got our first letter. So this is why these strokes are very important to know how to do. This is why we practice. This is the basic building blocks of school lower case. For most of them, anyways. So basically, when you're practicing, what you're going to do. Mindful, slow. If you're watching this later on YouTube, this might be the part where you want to. Stroke. <laughs> So as you can see here, all the downstrokes are going to be on those dotted lines because I know that that's the 55 degree uh, slant line that I'm trying to be consistent with. Stroke. Starting at the S line, popping up, up to the A center line, down. See here, uh, I don't know if you see that, but. Let's try that again. We're starting at the waistline, bringing it up, looping, and as I'm as I'm curving, do that again. As I'm curving here, starting at the waistline, going up, curving, and then I press as I get around the corner slowly. And seeing this this close up, wow, shaky. All right, so let's try that a little a little bit more confidence there. So we're not doing this. So you can see. So what we're not doing is this. Not doing this. We're controlled. Starting at the waistline, we're going up, pulling down. As I said that, I was doing this and I looked. You know what I did? What I did. Let's do that one more time. Mistake. 
The benefit of doing calligraphy, by the way, is that it's just rest. Take care of that. You can recycle that. No, no one will see. Except now, this is on the internet, and everyone will see mine. No one will see yours, which is fine. Uh, up. Stopping at the baseline. Just making sure. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I had I had a little panic moment. It's like, oh my god, is my mic not? Picking? But I saw it was working. So we're good. Uh. Okay. Cool. So now we have the A center loop. Now we're gonna do the D center loop, which is we're starting at the waistline, past the baseline, and we're basically doing like the mirror image of this guy. Pressing. And as we turn, I'm lifting a bit. So that line and that line thin and thicker. Press, release, back up to the baseline. Waistline, down to the descender line, turn, up like that. Uh, and then we're going to start at the baseline, hits the waistline, and back down again. We're doing the left half of the McDonald's arch. So, light, starting here. Up, we're going to start to turn, and we're going to pull it back towards ourselves on the dotted line. We're not doing, not doing that. We're not doing this. Doing up, down. We're doing parallel at 55. Trying to make a curve. We're not doing sharp curve. That. So this is getting a little a little technical. But for those of you who have done things like this before, uh, what we're kind of looking for the invisible old that's hanging out in here. Let me do one. An oval, like living here. Kind of what we're looking for. Like, a, always looking for life, the nice, the nice oval. That's why. That's why we want it to not be like a, a going up and then we're crashing down. Curve, and uh, bringing it back down again. Uh. Overturn. <clears throat> Let's do the underturn, the mirror image of the turn. So we're new press. Okay. So the the dark line, the the thicker line is going to be the one that was on that fifty five. So we're not doing press this, not doing press this, doing press. That makes sense. If you're only listening to this audio wise, you have no idea what I'm doing. Screen. <laughs> uh, overturn, underturn. Uh, the compound curve is kind of like the underturn and the overturn smushed together. So we're doing a start away, pressing towards ourselves, and then again. I, I still have trouble sometimes with this guy. Uh, what determines how wide the oval should be and the other loops related to is it with a 3 2 3 ratio? Um, so the it's a bit more technical and I think actually a bit more technical ex expertise than I have. However, my 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 rule of thumb for something like that for that very specific question is visually they need to be even to each other. Uh, I will give you a word. Write the word cat. Okay. Uh, it's not the best I've ever written in my life, but this will make the point. <clears throat> so how wide should the ovals be? They should be as wide as each other.
this. And it's not really an oval, but the letter itself is about the same. So my, my rule of thumb is to try and make it as visually even with itself as possible. One. Uh, when you're doing your exit or your entry stroke, i.e. the thin one as well, which will, this will help keep things even, is that this line is nicely tucked next to the, the oval that's here, but we're not piercing it. Uh, I don't remember who I had read this from or heard this from, but think of this as a, like a balloon, and you don't want to stab and deflate the balloon. You would like this little pokey part to lean against it. Another trick... that I like to do is I like to turn it upside down. I will cover the bottom half. This will tell me right away how easy it is. So it's not a, a ratio specific thing, it's a ratio to itself. If this is even visually, your eyes are gonna be very happy. So I can see right away, my C was too wide comparatively to these ones. So I should have, this could, because it because I broke the baseline and went over too far. This is now wider. This one, this one, and then this one. Does that make sense? Let me know if that made sense to you. Okay, perfect. Hope that helped. Uh, where was I? Oh yes, the compound curve. Go over, towards, and away. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm, even though I've been doing this for years, the compound curve for me is always the hardest one because I want to do, uh, there's another hand that I do, it's called Spencerian, uh, and it's, it's always doing, it's like a running hand, so you're not lifting a lot, and a lot of it is uh, like you're looking at things like this. So a compound curve for me, I want to pull it towards itself and then push away without having a nice curve here because of the, my, the Spencerian that's in my brain. Uh, so this is... This is a uh, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> and I will try my best to be as precise with the, with the compound curve as I humanly can be. So the compound curve, we're going up and away lightly. We're pressing as we come back to ourselves, and then we're going back again. Basically, what we're trying to do is we're trying the little oval that lives here and the little oval that lives here. We're trying to make them even. We're trying to make them visually look the same. Uh, and then, so if you then turn it around, uh, it's the same uh, upside down as it is right side up. Uh, sometimes I have, I like I said, I have I have issues with that. I, I, I one always ends up being shorter and more cramped than the other. Um, so whenever I do a compound curve somewhere, if you ever see any of my work, it's probably in there somewhere. It's something I'm actively trying to work on to fix. Um, perfect. So we got a compound curve. Then uh, we got our oval, which is basically what copper plates, uh, which is the. Uh, there are a couple of ways that I have done this. Uh, it just depends on my mood and uh, what phase of me doing a thing I feel like. Uh, and by why, blah, blah, blah. And what I mean when I say this is I used to, but I do it not so much now. I used to start the oval on the right, bring it over. Like I would start it at around one o'clock, even two. Bring it around, press, and then I would aim back for that speed for that um that spot. I now start and I do this. So basically the other way. Here around. The reason I stopped doing this and do this now 
is you can kind of see the difference. It's not as precise here. I'm pulling up and I'm going to going too steep of an angle here. And you're it's a lot of you hope you hit it at the right place. Um you kind of hide any errors by making that's where your because this is gonna be the letter O or any other thing, is that if you do it from this way and you and you mess up, you can put your A there, or you know, uh, you can put your your little dot, your little filled in dot for your O to hide the little mistake, quote unquote the mistake. Um, but when I do it this way, I find that that doesn't happen anymore um, because I'm starting up here. Also, it's a lot easier when you're writing consistently to always be doing the same stroke as often as you can. So when you're even, I don't know if you noticed, but when I did the word cat, I did C, A, T, even the C, and then I go back in, I'll fill in that little guy. Um, and if it was the same, I'm just making a bunch of, it's not, it's not a real word. Um, o, U. Generally speaking, it's a little, I'm, I'm making, because I'm making up a word, like my spacing's going to be off. Let's say C-A, let's say C-A-O-U-G-H-T. Let's see. I don't think that that's, is it? Maybe. Not with the O, A U, but C A O, because I want to put an O in. Generally speaking, it's easier for me to get a rhythm if I'm just always starting from up here and going up versus going here up here up and then I'm oh I have to go over here and then down and up and up and like that it's a little easier to just always start from the same spot uh but yes so generally speaking I would recommend doing the method where you're starting from the the waistline and then bring it down and then bring it back up again that would be my suggestion preferred method. Uh, so going through that, I will now do it with a pointed, which should bring us to after one two hour mark, which was exactly what I was planning on. Perfect. Now you're gonna see me do some, do some prep too. A bunch of people. So okay, actually, I should start. I should start this. Uh, I should start this sitting like properly. Uh, so nibs when they're brand new, which is what these ones are, usually come with some type of like coating to make sure that they don't rust in transport. Uh, I'm trying to decide if I should use. The Nico G, or if I should use my one, not sure what would be best. I'll use the Zebra G. I know that that one's easy to. It's just not my. Fa it's not my favorite one to use. But I, but I will do so for you guys. It works well in a pinch for for specific things. It's good. So. Windex, not sponsored, but Windex, okay? On a little paper towel. I have to clean off whatever oil is on here. Uh, some people will stick these in like a potato. I'm not kidding. Bib side down and just will put it in a potato. Like that is, that's a method. That's a way to do it. It's not how I would like to do it. I like to eat my potatoes. I don't like to, use it to clean myself. <laughs> 
Um, so number one. I'll use some Windex and it, I find Zebra G's are a little harder to clean off than other ones. I'm not sure why. Just are. I find that it's not cleaned off properly. I'll usually grab a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Do it that way. But basically I'm just trying to sure. do a little the thing that I normally do doesn't even change. I usually just take stickers. plastic. I'll just stick it in there and I'll twist and I'll. I really respect my tools. I respect them. I, I respect them and I use them. Even sometimes the way that they're not intended to be. But I do use them. Yeah, you can see actually in this one that I had, I have, there's some gold in this one. Uh, this is the walnut ink, by the way. Uh, but you can see I'm I'm disrupting the old pigment that had uh, settled on the bottom a little bit. We're gonna see Zebra G nail. Yes, we're good. So what we're looking for, okay, is that the well, the uh, circle that's there. Not. versus something in it. So that one's clean. This one has ink in it. Let's see. Let's see, ooh, shiny gold. So if the coating hadn't been cleaned off, it would be pilling. Uh, you wouldn't have the ink sticking to it at all. It wouldn't be pilling. It would be pilling. It wouldn't be sticking. It would be a, a kind of a pain to try and use. Uh, you'd run out of it really fast. So, that the ink is flowing. So yeah, like I had mentioned, I'm using walnut ink. They're for forgiving ink as well. You don't have to go too crazy. Now I will be down. Whoop. So I am talking properly and I'm not losing the audio. Okay, so we're going to start again with stroke. See my. So this is the A sender. Baseline. Sender. Aiming for five degrees. Downstroke. So we're going to start with the eight basic strokes again. I really want to see how this. Pressing. I'm keeping even pressure all the way down. You can see as I press, like, saying is separate. Press really hard. It gets it's. So the basic shape that we're looking for, and this is going to get a little technical. I'm also not the best at this the bottom but I can't I'll show you what I just did. what we're basically looking for is square up bowl that's doing the one the one on the bottom the one that great at so I usually don't try uh, I press I pull and I get to the bottom to close the tine I kind of lean closes to the left. Normally that means then it's parallel to then on the top it's usually on a weird back in and you know why? No one 
No one cares as long as the final product is nice. You can't do it in one shot. Try, try your best to do it in one shot. That is really want you guys pressing and pressure. Close the tongue. It as squared off as you can possibly can. All right. So start off. Make sure that this is waistline, baseline, baseline. You want to get real specific, real nitty gritty. Depending, I, I'm, again, I'm not sure the level of watching uh, beginner interview. Uh, please know in advance, and if you are advanced, uh, you probably know more than here. <laughs> uh, anyways, so a little, a little tipsy. Something that will happen if you're doing the pressure and is that it's like, cause if you think of this like a rectangle, you'll see that the line side is going to be at that is this one and out here maybe a third to the bottom that's when you start to turn the time you get to the bottom you're at a hairline it's like very nitty gritty but if you're looking at the details of this that's that's what's happening kind of what you're aiming for so you're looking let's see if i can do it. staring Pressure. This kind of went a little too. Far. You can still see what I. Also weird. Uh, but straight down. It should have been a little higher. Like, shouldn't have gone. Up. Like a like a nice. Like a smooth like rotation into that curve. This is a little too chunky. This curve started too low. It should start a little bit higher. It should be like an like an ease in versus a sharp drop off <laughs> or a sharp yes. Uh, by the way, if you haven't noticed, I'm holding the paper at a very steep angle itself. I totally forgot to mention that. Uh, so basically, so the what, what's basically happening here, you kind of see it on the bottom, bottom left, uh, this angle. Uh, the 55 degree is kind of pointing towards my tummy. This makes it easier for me to proper angle without worrying about it too much. Uh, that along with uh, also something I also I did not which is when you are at, well as you can see the flannels it uh, so that and hip is at the angle. I also hope that the other camera angle has been helpful uh, to see how my it's holding the angle. Because I find I find that that is something that I uh, it gets missed on uh, uh, when 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 classes, uh, specifically for calligraphy, is that because we're only seeing the top down, we don't know what the steep steepness of the angle is for the nib. I hope that that is helpful in some way, shape, or form just to see how I'm. Uh, also, uh, I don't know when I got into this habit, but I basically like where I have my like
Uh, but this also has an angle though, so I don't know if I would do that with one that doesn't. This is the one I use the most, so I'm very used to this pen hold. Uh, and then my things, like up next. Um, but yeah, like this is this is kind of where it's. Coming. Uh, also, I'm not doing this. See that that pressure, but I'm not. This 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 is not good for your hand. It's not good for your. Not doing, not. I'm not gripping my pen hole. Very loosely. Pressing, but I'm not killing my hand, um, which is very important. I don't want you guys injured. I'm very comfortable. Loose. I'm still. We're not trying to carve the letter paper. We're calligraphy um yeah actually are kind of see what I'm what I'm doing with my So as you like when you're you were watching it's very not pressing I'm just see a little probably a little. that is tip this one because Yikes. Uh, okay, cool. Let's go on to the descender loop. I'll talk about my hands. Um, got the line, baseline, center line. See that? Yes, we can. We're going to start from the waistline. Press all the way down to the D. Up to itself. Stop right there. So we're see. But with curve, we're starting the the curve process up here, right? Like we're starting it here. We're not starting it so close down to the baseline. Smoothly. So as I'm doing this, I'm starting to release pressure right right here. If you're doing this for as specific practice, trying to make it work for you so you can learn. So something to keep an eye out for. What we're trying to do, trying to, as you can see, the only one that didn't break the DC. I broke it. But, so this one broke the descender. Note with this guy. This guy's right on it. Great. The loops being similar size. Great. So if I were to look at this with a, a more critical eye, I would do maybe three or four and I would go back and I would look and be like, Hmm, okay, so this one and this one were going over. I wonder why that happened. Maybe I was going too fast. But I like that the loops are constant. Right. Then I would back in. Of 
try that would be the thing I'd be focusing on. Don't break the deep. So I didn't break the descender. Now this one arrow is to this one's the best one. There. This guy here. Best one. Uh I like that it kind of slopes and then it I like the consistency of this loop right here. So like when you're doing practice like this, it's not just do as many as you can. Um, because it's also a way that you can get bad habits, muscle memory to be quickly. So my, my recommendation when doing any type of practice, any type of focused mind practice, and you or a letter, whatever the case be, is that don't just do a page of A's or a page of B's. Uh, really try and focus on something you're working on, like I had mentioned uh maybe do only three four five in a row and then go back and look and see where you where's the thing you like where's like hmm, that could be better if i focus more that that's kind of how uh when when you learn uh that's it's a good critical thinking skill to have is is figuring that out for yourself because self uh, self critique is really important because not everyone has like a teacher or something that that is accessible or so i i would say trying to focus on one specific thing that you're trying to improve on would be good when practicing don't you just do a pay a page of something without paying going um because i don't want you to have uh or having to relearn something afterwards because you, uh, you put like the the incorrect uh, skill in your say better but more consistent one yes maybe uh no we did not do the overturn so we're going to i.e the left side of the up and this is the baseline. I'm looking at both decent. I also have to say, looking at my work this closely, this closely, even though I, it's like, I could use, but I only use this. Uh, just to give my eyes a bit of a break. I wear glasses all the time. Um, if you're looking really close, sure, you can. Most people don't look at things that closely. Okay. Closely. So just... How beautiful. <laughs> if that looks from far away. <laughs> just something to They're always, always, always in life and in all. Uh, yeah, so that's the turn. Let's loop. Starting from the uh, waistline up to the ascender, back down. Cool, cool. <clears throat> so waistline, bring it out to a loop. As we get to the top, bring it back. I turn and then I start to press straight down. What I'm basically trying to do, it's actually good that I did this right under, trying to mimic and I uh, the same size loop Center loop to the deep. 
That one's better. So, uh, which is why it's important to try to get as consistent with the human Flipping your world upside down. Sometimes you see things. Just notice them. Uh, but yeah, you're basically trying to make uh, loops here and the loops here. You're trying to make them about the same size. You would like them to be, uh, you know, sisters, not twins. We definitely don't want them to be third cousins. So a center loop. And now we got our compound curve. You guys are going to see me struggle with this one. So up, pressure, wasn't horrible Not for me. <clears throat> so again, we're starting at the baseline, waistline, back down to the baseline. Waistline, waistline. Yeah, because my my instinct always wants to do this. Do I want to go in sharp? Always my thing. It's it's really hard for me not to <laughs> to properly. Um, but yeah, basically, and again, we're trying to keep the little oval that lives in here. Assistant. But basically, you know, hairline up, we're pulling then towards us. Little too here, but not so bad. Uh, I'm basically trying to show you where what happens here. Right in. Consistency here be the same with this part. Oh, this is not great because you can see here, like the minute you start looking really closely, you can see where there are some. <clears throat> I started the curve here at the right spot, but when I came down, I started pressing too. Hard. Should have started pressing. So I came up and I started pressing in. Gradually came the least and round um which is why it's not this is very very fin you're a noob you're a new kid you don't have to be that precise this is just like you know uh if you can just kind of so again we're not doing this i know well, actually, sorry. We will do this when we get to the letter X. But um, we're not doing... This. Not doing... This. Doing... Not doing that. We're not doing this. Like, there's a lot of ways that you can kind of go wild. A, towards us at five. I hope. Compound curve. And then our last, our last one, last one, the oval.
But like I said, you can start from over here if you want. But see how sharp that I'm making? That's just the way my hand wants to go now. I don't want to do that. I this to be I don't want to have to hide something. I want it to be consistent. Like all the way. So I'm gonna start from up here. Nicer that oh, this one. How much more consistent this is. Not perfect, but it's much more consistent. I start from a is when I start from here. Pleasing to my eyeballs. Oh. Then you can put the here, you can put here, depending on what your vibe is, like some variation or something. you have a lot more options. Yes. You're also connecting two hairlines is really hard to do well. Uh and without some block that that here. Whereas here you're going from like a hairline to a thick downstroke to and it's a lot easier. Back to itself. Uh, I think that was all of the big strokes, I believe. We're good. I think we. So I'll them one more time all in a row. Tender curve. Or, sorry. Compound curve. So oh, these, yeah, like I said. Uh, I think I'm done with that this evening. Uh, I will go through one last thing before we go with this proper nib etiquette. Gotta keep it clean. So, a nib is a consumer. We'll have to throw them. Don't, you don't, don't keep them and try. They're not working properly. Scratching. There are spraying ink everywhere. Do yourself a favor. You can throw them away. It's fine. Give you. But this one's brand new. I want to keep it for a little while. So how do we do that? Uh, I, I'm fancy, and I, this is like a little push, well, with, it's like. Uh, it's just like one of those push bottles that you can. I just. Uh. Less messy and less of a chance of a open glass of water to be thrown everywhere and ruin your So I just push some paper. I go in and I will. I remove it from the holder. Okay. Move it from the holder. Because when I oh, look, this ink had gotten in there. What happens when ink gets into a holder? It can sometimes get stuck in there. The ink will dry and then your nib will be stuck. I know this from personal experience, okay? It's not fun. It isn't. Uh, it will also rust your flange sometimes too, depending on what you have, uh, which is annoying, very frustrating. But now, see, it. nothing on there anymore. Is clean whistle. And then usually I'll just. Uh, if I had an open jar of water, I would, I would 
this in a little bit, but I don't, so I just I put a little water on here. Pull some of the ink out that had gotten stuck inside. And then I leave these to dry. I mean, this is already dry, but if it was still a little. So it's perfect. And then when I would, I highly recommend you always do that. Please don't leave your nib inside of your, uh, your pen holder. Like I want you to keep them as possible. So you don't have to uh, change them out as often. They are, they are consumable. That doesn't mean you have to be useful. And I want you to be able to uh, like keep your pen holders like in good condition. And a way to do that as well is by making Uh, I think that is it for me. I'm at two hours and eight minutes. And I, that's basically what I wanted to be at. So that's awesome. Is if anyone's still around, let me know if you have any questions before I log. Have our next, uh, let me double check when my next stream is. Oh, you are super welcome. If you have any questions, like I, I'm not in a rush to leave. It's just I don't also don't want to bombard and or overwhelm, uh, overwhelm with information. So let me just double check when my next is. I think it's on Thursday. Yeah. So my next stream is going to be Thursday. Uh, the first, so this Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, I will be announcing it on my uh, on my Instagram. Uh, you know, little reminder here and there. I promise not to bombard too much. But if you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to do so. And uh, you know, I have I have some time this week, so um, I think what I'm gonna do. Is uh, if you want to submit a page of homework to me, you can feel free to do so, and I can do maybe a little correction if you want me to do that for you. Uh, if you're not already in the big, um, actually, uh, so I have a there's a public Discord that I run uh, called the Clicker Community. If you go onto my Instagram, which is at Nielsen Letters, which you can see under here. Um, uh, in my 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 bio, there's like a little link that says Discord. Uh, if you want to go in there and join, there is a private channel uh, on the left hand side that is for homework submissions for this. If you want to do that, let me know and I will add you to that so you can submit homework for me there. Um, so I can correct it and then I, everyone can learn together. Uh, I kept it as like a, a, a private, uh, channel in there. So, cause I know sometimes people can get a little bit, um, shy, uh, when it comes to feedback and stuff. So I don't, I don't want to make anyone feel uncomfortable, but also I like people to learn from each other. So if there's anything, let me know. Um, other than that, I guess have a good evening and I will see you all on Instagram and, uh, I'm going to try and get this uploaded to YouTube. It's a Oh, thank you so much, Lisa. That's so very. I'm happy that the nitty gritty isn't just boring. It doesn't like overwhelm anyone. <laughs> uh, so I'm happy that that is. Um, but yeah, I guess if that is everything and there's no questions, uh, I, I mean, I love the praise, but if there's no questions, I will, I'll log off and I will see you back here. Okay. So I hope.